Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'll be restoring this Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3, Samsung's newest foldable phone. Its most innovative feature might be its biggest drawback. The folding display has snapped in the center fold, rendering the phone unusable. It has been dropped as evidenced by some scrapes on the hinge. According to the seller, it's only six months old, with the screen beginning to fail after the drop, with the dead pixels slowly getting larger. I purchased it for just $230, a staggering $1,370 less than what Samsung is currently selling one for, so I'm hoping it'll be a good deal after we spend the money to fix it. Inside the parcel was the original packaging that was housing the damaged Z Flip 3, along with some documentation, but no USB-C cable. The phone, well, it's seen better days. These foldables are just so fragile. Those small scrapes around the back have apparently caused this major damage to the display. The inner glass section of the display has cracked into thousands of pieces. In a closed state, the display appears to be warping, so it might have come loose from the frame. This is not the first time I've seen a foldable screen snap in the crease. In fact, a quick search on eBay and you'll find loads of them, including a lot of 10 of the same Flip 3 models with similar looking defects. This damaged $1,600 phone is now so cheap because you'll need to fork out a lot of money to fix it. A lot more than $25. $350 in fact, for this Samsung replacement. That's not as bad as the first generation flip. Its display was around $700 when I purchased a replacement a little over a year ago. It's time to get our new display attached. I begin by heating the two back sections on my heat plate for several minutes before attempting to remove them using a suction cup and plastic pick. The adhesive holding both in place runs around the perimeter of the glass panel. There are some cables under both pieces that you need to take extreme care of. At the lower half, there's a large cable on the right side. It's glued between the two sections, so damaging it would require a whole display replacement. So if you're repairing a Flip 3 and don't want to change the display, be mindful of the cable while removing the glass. At the top section, there's the outer display flex cable and the housing interconnect cables you need to avoid damaging when removing the top section. Additionally, you want to ensure you don't insert the pick too far around the fragile outer OLED display. Folding it towards the top reveals its cable. After unlatching its retaining bracket, we can disconnect the display and remove the panel. With our first look inside the Flip 3, it's similar to previous models, with the exception of some minor motherboard layout changes. The general layout consists of the motherboard up top with a smaller battery below. In the lower section is the main battery and charging equipment. I'll start by disconnecting both batteries to remove all flow of electricity to the phone. Proceeding, I can begin removing the motherboard. To do that, I'll first need to disconnect all the flex cables attaching to it and remove any retaining screws. After the upper antenna has been taken out, I can eject the SIM card tray and unplug the front camera. With that, the motherboard is now free to come out. This motherboard is packing 256 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM and a Snapdragon 888 processor. Back at the phone, it's time to get the first battery out. It's glued in, so with the help of some alcohol and picks, I can pry it free. The last component from the top half is the front camera. As it's glued in with what appears to be silicon based adhesive, I need to cut it free, being mindful not to damage its flex cable in the process. At the lower section, I can now take out the wireless charging coil and begin loosening the speaker. Lifting it out of place reveals the charging port. I'll remove an interconnect cable and the main OLED flex cable before unfastening the charging port PCB. Below is yet another interconnect cable that we'll need to detach. With the charging port out of the way, it's time for the vibration motor. 
With the aid of some alcohol, I was able to free it from the housing. Last, but certainly not least, is the main battery, which I can remove in a similar manner to the other. Now that we've completely disassembled the Galaxy Flip 3, it's time to unpack our new display and get everything installed onto it. As I mentioned earlier, the display cost me $351, making the total investment $581. The new assembly comes with the flexible display attached to the frame, and the earpiece already installed. Everything else will need to be swapped across. While I don't think it's possible to buy the OLED by itself, if you were to find one, never go with that option as attempting to line up a folding display would be almost impossible. The slightest error, and it would fold incorrectly, and could crack. These screens are really fragile. After it's unpacked, I can begin the reassembly process. I'll start by removing the old adhesive from the battery and applying some new stuff. While not a one-to-one -one match, it will be perfectly fine at holding the battery in place. I'll reattach the vibration motor before seating the battery into position. Next, I can get the charging port installed by attaching its three cables and one Phillips head screw. To get the speaker installed, there are five screws holding it in place, one of which is a longer. This is unusual to see from Samsung, but they've made it easy by colour coding the long screw black. The last component for the lower part of this phone is the wireless charging coil. Once it's installed, the phone is starting to come together. But there's still a few more pieces to install yet. One of which is the smaller of the two batteries. I'll need to clean off its old adhesive and apply a strip of new adhesive. Once the protective film is removed, I can attach it inside the Galaxy Z Flip. Up top, I'll position the front camera without applying any extra glue, as the bracket that screws on top will prevent it from coming out. Next, I can reinstall the motherboard and connect all of the relevant flex cables, excluding the battery. Proceeding, the upper antenna can be fastened into position. This will also help hold the front facing camera in place that we didn't apply any glue to. Now it's finally come time to test out our phone. I'll reconnect the two battery connections and flip the device over. After removing the protective cover from the front display, I can power up the device. As you can see, our new display is not only displaying every pixel correctly, but the touchscreen is also functioning. With that, we can reinstall the last two brackets before we get the rear panels reinstalled. With some careful reapplication of tape and a proper cleaning, it doesn't even look like this phone has been disassembled. Now it's come time to reattach the back panels. As they're in great condition, I'll be reusing them, but before they can be reattached, I need to remove all of the old adhesive. It's important that as much of that old stuff is removed to ensure the replacement glue sticks and the panel sits flush on the body of the device. Before I apply the glue, I'll attach the outer display's flex cable and retaining clip. While I'm at it, I'll also remove the protective film from the front of the display, as this will just make it easier to apply my liquid adhesive. For this, I'll be using B7000 liquid adhesive, as I lost my tube of E8000. Regardless, this is pretty much the same stuff, and it smells just as toxic. I'll run it around the perimeter of both the upper and lower sections. It's important to apply a lot of this, as if not enough is applied, there's a high risk of the panel just falling off. It's also important to ensure that the panel is held down firmly until the glue dries. I'll take care of this after I apply both panels, as I'll be holding them down using rubber bands.
with the lower panel positioned, I can fold the display closed and apply several rubber bands. The device will need to be left for several hours or overnight in my case. After the elapsed time, I can remove the rubber bands and see the result. It's held together nicely, but it's looking a bit messy, so let's clean that up. Running my nail down the edges, I can scrape away any excess glue that seeped out the sides. Once complete, the last thing I need to do is reinstall the SIM card tray. And we're done. So this is it. An unusable Galaxy Z Flip 3 has been restored back into a working state. With costs totaling $581, not only did it cost less than a new one, but it was also cheaper than any of the recently sold eBay listings. However, in a year's time, the price will fall and it will likely be uneconomical, meaning most of the broken ones won't be repaired. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.